Thank you all for joining us today. We really appreciate it. My name is Annette Manius with Oasis Solutions, and we're going to be joined uh, by Sage, and I'll have uh, them introduce themselves in just a moment. But we appreciate you coming to Sage Partner Cloud, and we're going to talk about what it is and why, uh, why you may want to consider moving uh, to the cloud. So first of all, we have a couple people on the line that um, that may not know uh, much about Oasis, actually are not customers of Oasis. So I want to tell you a little bit about us. Um, we are celebrating 30 years, May 1st, and uh, we have been uh, best places to work for several years, uh, Fast 50, uh, different organizational things in, in the state of Kentucky. Um, also on Bob Scott's top 100 VARs, which you all probably don't know who Bob Scott is, but it's like this list of, of value-added resellers like us that are in the industry. So it's a very prestigious industry um, list to be on. And we have about 500 customers in 36 states. Um, so we have a lot of customers that uh, will start out with us in Kentucky and then maybe move to another state or have open up a different division, that type of thing. So um, we have a lot of customers in different states. And, um, you know, we believe that software is one piece that of what you have, but it's people who are the other piece of that. So uh, we have some people on the call today who've been customers for a really long time. And I think it's, it's probably because, mostly because of our people, I'm sure it's because Sage Software is great, but, you know, I think the biggest part of it is, is working with us. Um, I hope, I hope that's what it is. We try to do our best for our customers. And so on our staff, we have um, a lot of CPAs, MBAs, former CFOs, controllers. So people that have been on, I always say on, on your side of the desk. So understanding not just the software, but also how the business works, um, I think is important to our customers. Um, so a lot of our project managers, we have 350 plus years of combined experience. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to, again, I introduce myself. My name is Annette Manius with Oasis Solutions. And Fong, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself and Kevin as well. Hey, everyone. My name is Fung. And let me turn it over to Kevin because I have a longer introduction a little bit later. So Kevin, how about you go first? Okay. Hi, I'm... Uh... Kevin Coato, I'm the uh, Director of Development for Sage 100, and I will be uh, giving you a little demo of SPC uh, after Fong goes for a presentation. Thank you very much. All right, so um, just to say hello. Hello, everyone. My name is Fong Nguyen. I'm the Product Marketing Manager of Sage 100, and I'm here to tell you what we're going to talk about today. <laughs> so we're going to kick it off with uh, why migrate to the cloud? What what is this whole Sage Partner Cloud program? I'm sure you've heard a lot about it already, but we're gonna talk about more of the, the, the nitty gritty of what this program really entails. The question we always get is why Microsoft Azure? So we're gonna hit that nail on the head today as well from both the Sage perspective as well as from Oasis's perspective. So what does this mean to you? Um, we're gonna talk about why Sage Partner Cloud is a big deal. And um, lastly, Kevin is going to show us a demo so that you can see what this really looks and feels like. Um, throughout this presentation, we welcome your questions, your comments, please pop them in the chat and Falana will be uh, moderating the questions as we go along. We are happy to stop and answer questions at any time. So please, please do add your questions and comments as we go through. Um, and then lastly, this presentation is recorded and it will be sent out to you tomorrow. Okay, thank so, you, Fong. Yeah. So first, um, why migrate to the cloud? And um, we get this question a lot. Um, and so we have uh, our customers, Sage 100 customers, um, I love the product, and, but want to be more accessible and be able to access the information from wherever they are. So with uh, migrating to this cloud platform, you can easily migrate uh, using the product that you love, the Sage 100 that you love, no retraining, um, when you go to the cloud, your backups, your backups are done for you, no hardware to purchase or maintain, and then you can access your Sage 100 data from anywhere. So that's the, the advantage, I think, of uh, Azure is what we're going to talk about today. And um, so why, what's the biggest reason why people want to move to the cloud? And I think it is uh, scalability without buying new servers. So we've seen 
some of our customers grow and maybe take on a different um, division, that type of thing. And uh, be nice to be able to do that without having to buy new hardware, uh, cut IT costs, and then easy access. You know, there's a lot of a lot of reasons that people want to move to the cloud. Um, and uh, this Azure will give you some some uh, way in which to do that with your software. So, uh, Fong, if you want to talk about what is the Sage Partner Cloud? Sure. So like Annette says, this is the same Sage 100, right? No retraining. This is what you know and love. Um, the only thing is that um, this is under a quote unquote different name um, because we are enabling our partners like Annette to bring y'all up into Azure as quickly and as speedily as basically humanly possible. The way I'd like to think about it is we basically uh, created like a quick super highway to the cloud. And the whole purpose is to bring our customers um, data hosted there. Um, this is in line with Sage's strategic vision of you know, becoming um, a world-class SaaS company that helps our customers stay ahead of the curve. And we really, really believe in this vision of bringing our customers to the cloud. Um, if we could go to the next slide. So one question we always get is why Azure? And the simple answer is that we believe in it. You know, we have a really strong relationship with Microsoft already. A lot of our customers use Microsoft in their everyday lives. So this relationship has been fostered over a very long time. And then now that we're looking at um, piloting this new program to bring more of our customers to the cloud, Azure was just an easy um, sort of a, a, an, an easy pick for us. Um, Azure is very, very, very flexible. We understand that a lot of our customers have additional ISVs or additional add-ons that they've built into their Sage 100 platform to really create their one-stop shop of everything they need. So we really needed a partner that could help um, with that aspect of hosting as well. And lastly, compliance and security focus, right? When we do our internal surveys to our customers of, you know, uh, what do you think about the cloud? What are your thoughts about moving to the cloud? When, um, I guess, humbug that a couple of folks do have questions about is the questions around compliance and security and can I really trust it? Well, with Azure, you know, we can't say, we can't, for legal purposes, I can't make a bold faced you know, guarantee, absolutely. But I can say that Azure is very well respected. They spend a billion dollars in um, security R&D every year. And they boast on the website that they have 3,500 security experts. I mean, they are well positioned to help all, to help all of our Sage customers move to the cloud. And I think that um, that, that additional name from Microsoft really helps put a lot of folks at ease as well, because this is new technology for a lot of folks. So we want to make sure that you feel comfortable. And now on to Annette. Okay, thanks, Fong. Um, so why Azure? And it's 95% of Fortune 500 companies already use the product. Uh, so it's a very stable, uh, reliable product um, that uh, has really good uptimes. So 99.9% .9 uptime. So that's so when we talk to customers about cloud uh, security is an uh, is a is a concern and also that uptime. You know you want to make sure that it's it's up up and running when you need it to be. So uh, 24/7, 365, 99.9%. Um, and it can work with other applications. So you could have your Stage 100 hosted there, but then you could also have other products that you have. Uh, hosted on Azure as well. So you don't have to have uh, one platform for your Sage 100 and another server, another platform for any other product that you have. So uh, it can all coexist on, on the one platform. Um, and the, the big thing too, people always say, well, I want to access uh, my Sage 100 from anywhere, even at, on the beach yeah. or the local pub. So uh, always yeah. ask the question, why would you do that on the beach or the local pub? But anyway, people always say that they want to do that. So there you go. So that, that would allow you uh, to do that as well. And I'm sure that some of you guys on this call are have Sage 100 on premise. So on and a, a server that's at your office. And then some of you all I know are being hosted by another provider. Um, so, you know, what's the difference between another provider or a, a Microsoft Azure? And, you know, I think it, going back to what Fong was saying is the, the uh, uh, R&D and the, the resources and the money that Microsoft puts into this platform to make sure that the, uh, it's upgraded and it has a good infrastructure and it's reliable um, 
is 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 a concern you know is is something to really kind of think about what does that look like so um uh that's that's one of the reasons that that i think sage started down this road and then we said you know this is something that we want to look at for our customers too why is sage partner cloud a big deal well i can tell you from the sage perspective why it's a big deal um Philana, you wouldn't mind going to the next slide So when I joined Sage about a year and a half ago, and apologies for any background information here, when I joined Sage about a year and a half ago, you know, I did what any product marketing manager does. I started talking to our customers and I started asking them a lot of questions like, how do you like our product? Um, what can you tell me about your experience? Um, what are you doing around this, this digital transformation thing, right? I was doing a lot of research on that. And the overwhelming majority of the customers I talked to loved our product. They love, oh, could you go back to the last slide? They love our product. They had great things to say. And when I talked to them about digital transformation, they had one of two things to say. Either, yeah, we get this whole cloud thing. It sounds really important. We're gonna get to it in about five years. Or they would say something along the lines of, we love where we are right now. Don't try to sell me anything new, Fung. I know you're new. I know you can't sell me, but don't sell me anything new. Um, we love where we are. We don't need this new cloud thing. We're gonna kick it down the can for another five years, right? We're gonna kick the can down for another five years. So basically I kept talking to people who said, well, this is not an urgent issue right now. But from Sage's perspective, this is a big deal because we see this as being a big competitive advantage for our customers. So our task at hand was, well, how do we build a super highway to 2025? If customers are worried about um, you know, business interruptions, if customers are worried about reliability issues or compliance issues, what can we do to help them rest at ease and really get them to that ramp mode to 2025 faster? And so that was the, uh, one of the genesis of the Sage Partner Cloud. And uh, if we can go on to the next slide. And this last year, we were really proven correct, right? So if you think about where you were this time last year, especially if you're an FP&A professional, right? You were probably scrambling because I know for sure my financing scrambling. My finance team and I were on calls every single day so that we could look at all the numbers as they were pouring in so that we can track everything daily because suddenly it became critical to every business, not just Sage, to really see everything in real time, to be able to connect with anybody from anywhere um, and, to get data that you can trust and rely on. So we witnessed that transformation ourselves through this last year. We know our customers went through the same thing and we're confident that this decision to put our own services onto the cloud has really paid off for us. And we want to help ramp that up for our customers as well. We know that CFOs are leading the transformation for their businesses when it comes to getting new products, bringing things into the cloud, um, you know, securing the things they need to get, get their competitive advantage. And what we think of here at Sage is it's our job to help really speed that up as well because we want to see our customers succeed. So now I will turn it over to Kevin Kawada so he can show you exactly what this looks like. All right, hi guys, can you hear me? We can. All right, I am going to switch over to my iPad and we'll be ready to go. Okay, so um, what I'm going to show you today is what a typical user would see when they log into the Sage Partner Cloud. And this is our landing page it's for a QA site, so uh, it's not, not really live. You actually get a little slightly different version <clears throat> when you log in. Um, but we wanted to show you exactly what you, you would see and how you could use the uh, Sage Partner Cloud. Um, this probably doesn't sound very interesting because it's really just Sage 100 running in a virtual machine. And I'm sure a lot of you do that already. You just uh, do remote desktop into your into a server and you can see Sage 100 running. Um, but what our technology does is it adds a few new interesting uh, components running in the Azure environment. So um, what I wanted to show you today is some options and some ideas that you could uh, investigate on your own as you kind of explore the Sage Partner Cloud and some of the new uh, technologies that it opens up. Um, obviously, you can see that I am running on an iPad. So uh, that's kind of unique for Sage 100. Uh, we don't typically run Sage 100 on, on an iPad, but I will show you today how, how you can get it to work. I'm going to uh, log in here to Chrome. I've got a uh, customer. Oops. So one of the things you'd see here first is uh, we are logging in to what we call Sage ID. Uh, some of you already have Sage ID. If you uh, 
uh, connect with Sage City or some of our other services. It's the same uh, identity service that's used throughout Sage. So your one email can unlock several different components across the organization. And a new one now is the Sage Partner Cloud. Okay, and some of the benefits of this, uh, Sage ID provides some additional security um, rather than having users on your uh, virtual machines, you're actually logging in through Sage ID and that kind of anonymizes your user data. So from a security standpoint, it makes your uh, VMs a lot more secure. Uh, people can't just know you and log in uh, to the VM. They have to actually authenticate themselves through Sage ID. Uh, and we also provide uh, two-factor authentication. Uh, we are planning an upgrade to Sage ID later on in the year, and uh, that will also enable some multi-factor authentication. Uh, that'll make your uh, um, logins even more secure. Oh, there it goes. Hey, <laughs> and now it's fast. Weird. So, um, okay. So this is land, what we call our landing page. This is where you log in. Uh, a lot of that um, kind of connection type of stuff has to go through, uh, like I said, our Sage ID. So it logs in, authenticates yourself, uh, and then brings you here. Um, there are several ways to access the system from here. Um, and if you have multiple systems, you actually can create uh, different logons. As you can see here, the same user can log into all five of these different VMs <clears throat> that have been set up for this user. Um, we're just going into this first one. Uh, because I'm on an iPad, I only have access to the browser mode uh, of logging into Sage 100. So there are two modes. You can use the browser mode, which is the new mode that we're going to show today, which allows you to run off of virtually any browser. Uh, it seems to work best off of Chrome, uh, works great on Edge, a um, little flaky on Safari, but uh, most browsers work fine. Um, the other mode is desktop mode, and that is your traditional RDP mode where, I mean, we typically would log in with um, something like uh, logging into your VM like you would right now with a remote desktop. Um, that, will, that can only be done through Internet Explorer, though. So you do need to use Internet Explorer in order to run in RDP mode because that's the only way you can actually embed RDP in a browser. Um, but the more fun mode is this browser mode anyway. So we're going to launch 100. And what this is doing is it's running Sage 100 in uh, what we call browser mode. It's a HTML5 emulator. And it, you can see it's going to look just like Sage 100 on the desktop. And there we go. So. Hey, Kevin. We, we yep. have a question. Would you uh -huh. do Azure Active Directory integration for login? We are already doing that, but it is using the Sage ID. So what ends up happening is we're creating logins. Uh, you see, I didn't get a login here when I logged in because we're using a unified login uh, on Sage 100. And that's actually coming from the Sage ID being passed into it. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so this is where, where we are. Uh, let's see, I can scroll for me. It's the thing you have to worry about with uh, iPad is that it's very tough to actually use some of these features uh, with your thumb or finger. <laughs> so that's the only drawback to using um, uh, an iPad or any of your phones or things like that. Your real estate is kind of limited and uh, it's kind of hard to see everything on the screen. So, but you can see I can log in, I can go into AR, uh, I can go into customer maintenance. And it looks exactly like Sage 100. So uh, it's pretty pretty nice and easy. You can actually take this to the beach uh, or your pub or something like that and uh, log into Sage 100 and do some uh, some work there. And one of the nice things with um, Sage 100 uh, with the customization capabilities that are already built into the product, you can actually make some of these screens a little bit bigger or smaller depending on how you want to use them. Um, you can make your fields a little bit bigger. Um, to, so that, that it makes it more, more kind of touch friendly as opposed to being more keyboard and mouse uh, oriented and things like that. So um, anyway, I mean, that's kind of about it. Everything else is more or less the same. So I don't know what other kind of uh, 
uh, neat little demo things I can do for you. But um, if you have any other questions or uh, would like some more detailed examples, feel free to uh, reach out and uh, we'll be happy to set something up for you. Um, Kevin, Thanks. it looks like we do have another question. Mm -hmm. And it is, we currently host Sage 100 on Azure and use a VPN remote server to access our database. Is it mm -hmm. possible to run in browser with our current setup? No. So what we're using is a product called SparkView that we've licensed. You could do this and you'd have to buy the service and everything yourself and you could run in their browser mode. So that is, is a publicly available product, um, but it's also very expensive. So um, going through here, we've incorporated into the cost. We're using, uh, we're spreading the costs out over our product line. So it makes it a lot more uh, affordable uh, to do that. But yes, you can do it yourself if you wanted to. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Then it looks like we have another question here. <laughs> so people are starting to have them up here. Okay, so let's see. So we currently post with, or I believe me, uh, it says host. With Trap Online, it is essentially a terminal server in our Stage 100 cloud instance on another server. The Sage.exe in our company data is a map drive. They use VMware infrastructure, and I would assume those VMs are hosted, and I hope I'm saying this right, so my apologies, on their tenancy of Azure or Amazon Web Services. With this solution, this would just switch our host to be Sage tenancy on Azure. Okay. More or less, yes. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Fantastic. Alana, I want to go back to that last question that was on there also, because that's a question that uh, that I've had people ask is, can I move mm -hmm. from where I am to this and how easy is that transition and um we've we've done that so we know it's it's uh, you know depending on what you have uh going on like we had some customers that had some other things attached to their stage 100 so we would uh create a scope of work for that and but if you've just got a you know i'm moving from maybe like i think it was rocky might have said that they're mm -hmm. already using trap you know, how do I move from there to here? So it's, it's it, you know, it, it can be done pretty simple. Yes, I mean, we're taking a, a slightly different approach. This is essentially a Sage 100 standard implementation uh, running on a terminal server within an Azure VM. It's a single server solution. So uh, you don't have to, I mean, all you have, have is uh, the server and uh, two data drives. You have a drive for the operating system and a drive for Sage 100 and all the data and everything. Um, Every users will log in just like you saw me logging in. They'll create a, like a, um, their own individual workstation as they go in it's, and, and uh, everything's all in one VM. So you're not having to go across different networks or anything like that. You're just in a single VM. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, you could, you could, you could go the same way with a remote desktop. I mean, if you had IE installed right. and you're running on your laptop, you would get the same experience. Um, I didn't show you this, but you could also get complete access to the desktop. So it'd be like having a server I mean, that you have in your uh, data center or something mm -hmm. like that, being able to just log into that as well uh, if you're running it on a, uh, a single standard installation. And the nice thing about Azure is uh, you can bump up those machine sizes anytime. Uh, we start at a small size. Um, but if you start getting uh, latency, if you start uh, having 20, 30 people on board and, and everything, you could easily bump it up to the next size. Uh, and then you'll get a lot more um, uh, processing power, a lot more memory and stuff like that. Uh, for this opportunity to watch this today, Annette, because as you know, I'm a, I'm a spring butt and my arm was always going up and, you know, in previous user group meetings. And I am excited uh, that Sage is now truly Sage 100 Cloud. So yay, hats off to you guys. Thanks. <laughs> Great, thanks Rocky, we appreciate that. We appreciate it. I think we have a couple more questions. Actually, two of them, Falana, look like they're they're from two different people, but they're the same question really, about yes, speed. Speed, exactly. Yeah, so it looks like how does speed compare between remote desktop and the web-based version? I don't think you'll find too much of a difference between the two, whether they're remote desktop or uh, not. 
Uh, if you've ever used any Azure services as a VM, um, they are pretty speedy once you get logged in. I mean, there may be a little latency making the connection initially, but once they're logged in and running, they're, they actually run pretty fast. So, uh, and then you have complete control over what type of VMs uh, you want to use. So if uh, do a quick Google search of Azure VMs, and there are literally hundreds of different configurations that you can use, whether you want to be data centric, whether you want to be performance centric, uh, uh, whether you, uh, if you're disk intensive and things like that. Uh, we just use standard burstable um, uh, VMs, which are the kind of mainstay of, uh, of the, the VM world um, in Azure. So they're very inexpensive. Uh, they perform very well. They're equivalent to maybe like a, a, your typical 10th generation i7 server or something like that. Um, but you can bump those up by adding more memory, adding more processors and things like that for fairly minimal cost uh, and you'll get better performance. So, I mean, as I mean, you, you basically pay for whatever you want <laughs> in terms of uh, the performance there. And then you obviously have to figure out how many people are gonna be on the system, like how complex your operations are and everything else that's going on. Thank you. Um, looks like we have another question. Um, can we select some data from your database tables for management needs? Is yours a SQL Server database in the cloud? So the SQL Server version is in, in the works. We do not have it currently available. Uh, we are looking at, at doing that um, perhaps sometime this year, maybe late this year, uh, having that, that option available. Uh, but right now it's uh, generally just standard um, that's available in the cloud. Thank you. Sorry, I'm reading through these really fast. What about support? Who handles this, Sage or Oasis? So let General, me take that. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, on the uh, Azure part, uh, Oasis would uh, support that piece of it. Is that that's correct, Kevin? That's correct. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, we support that piece of it. Okay. There's another one here. However, you do some issues in pointing reports to your local on-site printer with the PDF driver Sage uses, documented issues seen in Sage KB threads. Mm -hmm. there, there are different ways that you can uh, print locally. Mm -hmm. So um, if you're using the browser mode, which is what I was showing with the iPad, you are kind of limited in what you can do. So you do have to use PDFs and you have to print out through that driver. Um, but I know we have a lot of forms that are very detailed. They're uh, custom made and things like that. So, sorry, <laughs> filtering. <laughs> um, so we have um, uh, the ability to go into remote desktop and with remote desktop, I know there are packages like, I think it's called TS Print uh, and a couple others out there that uh, do give you some more granular control over your printer. Um, you would need to investigate those on your own and determine if uh, you actually need that additional functionality. Um, some people are great with just the PDFs of the reports. You don't use pre-printed forms anymore. You don't need that um, kind of minutia of, of granularity in, in assigning your, your fields. Other people have, uh, I mean, invested heavily in, in these pre-printed forms and they want to keep on using them. So uh, it's really up to you how you want to proceed with that. Thank you. Okay, do we have any other questions? I think that we've gotten everything answered here in the chat and the Q&A. Uh, I do have one quick, I'm sorry to be this way, but I just love this stuff and I, I'm Mr. Reed's guy. So right now, uh, Trap doesn't give us an SMTP server to point our like pay stub delivery to uh, or, or uh, when we email out invoices to, to our customer database. So would you, would I, still continue to use the solution now, which is giving in the SMTP settings of Sage, I would just point it to outlook.com and give it a, a true user mailbox and password uh, in there, or would I be pointing to a Sage SMP, SMTP server to do those uh, two paperless office deliveries? 
No, you you would continue doing it the way you do now. So there's no okay. Sage uh, uh, SMTP server or anything out there. You can. Uh, one of the nice things that will come out with the 20, 2021 release is uh, we added OAuth authentication. So you can use some of the fancier Google Mail or something like that if you like as well that supports the multiple authentications. I talk. Thank you. Okay, guys. I think that's it. Um, if you all have any other questions, you can obviously reach out to Annette and we'll be following up. Lana, we appreciate it. Thank you all for coming today. And um, as we said earlier, we've recorded this session. So everyone here will get this recording. So you can go back and listen to it or share with anybody that you want. So uh, we appreciate you guys coming. If you have any other questions, just let us know and we'll make sure and get them answered. If we can't answer them, we will get back to uh, Kevin or Fong. Thanks, you guys. Have a good rest of the day. Bye. Bye.